Today in Bloodshot Salvation number three, Bloodshot gets to have a heart to heart with Daddy. You are now watching Hoodoo TV. Welcome back to Hoodoo TV. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and also give us a like if you like what you're hearing. I'm Jared. And I'm Hoosier. Today we're talking about Bloodshot Salvation number three, story by Jeff Lemire with art by Miko Suyan and Louis LaRosa and colors by Brian Reber. You can't get much, much better with that art team on this book and the writing. Bloodshot Salvation does not disappoint. We are going to get into some spoilers into this book, so make sure you read this book or hit pause or, hey, if you want to get spoiled, this is where you go. Keep going. Um, but we get a lot of cool bloodshot, a lot of magic, a lot of rampage, a lot of daddy, and it's all put together in a cute little bow tie <laughs> that we call issue number three. Yeah, uh, this book is crazy. It's intense. Uh, I mean, just the weaving of the story, you're wanting to know what's going on in this future timeline. And the way this book ends, it just makes you want to know what's going on in this current timeline, too, because right. what the heck? <laughs> it's going in every different direction. Um, you remember at the end of number two, uh, Rampage gets smashed by the Bloodshot team. Mm -hmm. And they have this little conversation about, hey, Ray sent us. Ray's dead. Really? And so they are having this conversation with uh, Magic, trying to get her to uh, meet the person that sent them. And it turns out they go to a barn and it's Punk Mambo. Yeah, Punk Mambo, she's got some sort of connection with Ray going on. So Magic is able to have a conversation with Ray. Uh, although, to her knowledge, he's dead. But he says he's not dead. He's actually stuck in the future in year 4002. And that's where it gets a little weird. Yeah. Right? How does he get there? What does he get there? And it gives just this big old picture of you know we're gonna go into this great direction through Lemire um, and that's just the first couple pages of this book guys right we keep going into this where daddy and Ray decide to have a little conversation and man daddy's such a creepo yeah he is he is manipulative and gross and disgusting and you know he wants to have more of a conversation Ray just really wants to kill him right <laughs> you're never gonna see magic and our baby and I don't give a crap and Daddy's telling him, like, I'm 300 years old. You can't kill me. I'm a prophet. And Ray decides to throw on the nanites, and the, his uh, Daddy's story kind of gets a little manipulative. Yeah, immediately he sees the change in him and says, I knew you were coming this whole time. Like, it's you. It's the devil. And so he's got all these people in his compound that he can just twist. And, you know, if the devil's on the compound in this weird religious whatever's going on here like these brainwashed people are definitely going to attack and so he's got himself a mini army to go against bloodshot right and uh some little child slaves it looks like too yeah um and then we get in to see more of the omen piece right mm -hmm. we get omen and he is in new mexico and they're going over project rising spirits um leftovers and they're basically doing inventory on what project rising spirit left omen and he comes across the nanites and he learns that, hey, there's still some nanites turned on and it's Bloodshot. And we kind of gave him amnesty because of what he did during Bloodshot USA in New York with the outbreak of the nanite virus. Yeah, and so <laughs> the scarred man pretty much says, like, hey, that's our property now. And let's turn it all off before we figure out, like, what can happen. You know, we want to we want to figure this stuff out before it's just running around. Yeah. If I untethered. can't control it, it ain't going anywhere. Exactly. So control. So they hit the off button. And then you go back to Bloodshot being destroyed by all of these um, hillbillies that are in this compound. And and Bloodshot's left kind of without his protection. And it's just Ray with Daddy and his crew. Yeah. So what's going to happen to Ray? I mean, is this where he dies? Is this this whole thing, you know... What's up with going on with the future? 4,280. How the heck does Pump Mambo talk to him in the future? But we also get the baby. We go to Jesse at the hospital. That's right. And Jesse is now baby bloodshot. And she runs out of the hospital and everybody's trying to stop her. And she gets on the phone for an emergency because she can't get a hold of Ray because Ray's with Daddy. Mm -hmm. And gets her old friend Colin King that she met in Bloodshot USA. And, uh, you know, she asks for help. And Colin sounds like he's on his way. Yeah. 
There are so many threads in this, and it is weaved so masterfully. And, I mean, this is a story that's set up for longevity. Mm -hmm. This is a story that's going to go on for a while, and every issue is going to be meaty, and we're going to chew on it, and it's going to be delicious and awesome. But there was so much in that, too. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just, I mean, we said all of that, but all of that was covered, and each page had some some huge pieces to it, right? Bloodshot 4002, Daddy's 300 years old, or is he? Mm -hmm. um, what's what's Ninjak going to do? How's he going to help? Gosh, what's up with next with Jesse? You know what I mean? What's happening? And we didn't get to see where's Rampage. What's Rampage? Who's Rampage? Who is he in the now? Is he Daddy? Is he the guy in the basement? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I'm so excited I don't know that right now. It's actually kind of cool. It is cool. And... That's just an, a, a testament to Lemire's writing. The fact that all of this, all these questions, all this information we've been given to lead us to these questions is fit into this single issue. It's incredible. I mean, amazing. That's all I can say. He is yeah. so talented and it really does shine in this book. Right. Number four comes out tomorrow, right? I wish. I wish. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, Louis LaRosa's art in the now is amazing. And then just looking at, um, we were talking or off camera, the panels that Miko Suyan puts together. They just look so cool. The interaction that he has of coming in and out of panels when Magic and Punk Mambo are talking together, it's just so like, just well laid out. Mm -hmm. Like, and then Reaver's colors fits both of them so good. And the fact that Reaver can really play with these different palettes and make it work for both timelines to really separate the two stories that we're getting here uh it's it's impressive it really is this whole story this whole composition here is masterfully uh executed it's right. amazing well and then we're also in two different spots three different spots now in the current right we're at daddy's compound we're at the hospital and then you also got ninja right and there's three different ones and the way they do it it's just it's so and, good and I'd also like to add, we also get Omen as well. Right. I mean, we have these these different right. moving parts here that we're just we're running with. It's just a great all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's time. I mean, um, I don't know where it's going, right? And you want to get some theories. And, you know, I was thinking maybe some nanites get out and there's Daddy and it makes him young and he turns Rampage. I don't know. Maybe it's the guy in the basement that we saw in issue number two. Um, I'm not sure who Rampage is, and that's kind of the question. And then how in the heck does Ray get to 4002? And we've seen the 4001 Bloodshot, where it's like just the head of Bloodshot, and it's the nanites filling the body, and it makes me wonder, did it transfer something? Was it a computer transfer? I'm not sure. I think it's really cool the way it has been. Kind of, you already see some foreshadowing, mm -hmm. but it's spread out a little bit to where you're not sure exactly what to actually pull on, what strings are being pulled where to make what happen yeah. down the road. Yeah. I think you said it right. Like, we, we can't predict what's going on here. And even with the title of these arcs that are coming out, the next one is The Book of the Dead. I mean... That can go any direction, right. you know? Well, I Punk know Mambo's in it. So Punk Mambo's in it, and I know that the, there might be a, an entrance into the dead side, but mm -hmm. what are they doing there, you know? Like, we just know that's the setting that's going right. to be a place that they're going, but it, it leaves it completely open. And, you know, it, it, I'm, I want to compare this with uh, Exo Manowar, which has been another great ongoing that Valiant has been doing. Uh, but they put out their, the titles of their, their arcs, and you have Soldier, you have General, Emperor. It's this this upward progression. Right. So you kind of get an idea that he's, you know, moving up the ranks or he's, mm -hmm. you know, he's taking these different positions. Uh, this one does, it doesn't really give you that much, and that's exciting. That is that is great, and I, I love the fact that we are veiled. We don't know what's coming. We don't know where it's going, and it's each step is just exciting. Right. Let's score this book up, dude. <laughs> oh, man. I bet you can even just guess what I'm going to give it. 16. If I could, in our <laughs> scale. It's our scale, so we can make it whatever we yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. 16 out of 5. <laughs> Done. Yeah. I Out of the current ongoings, uh, I mean, we have three right now. Um, this one's my favorite so far. I am giving this all scores, right? It's getting 100%, mm -hmm. you know, 110%. It did extra credit. Yeah. And um, 
it's passing for sure. It's getting a five out of five for me. Yeah, it is a great. I'm excited for this one every or, oh, every week, three the last three months. Um, the ongoings all around. I've enjoyed all of them. Exo's killing it. Ninja K that just came out. Ooh, awesome. Yeah. And now this one. Um, sign me up. These um, these ongoings with Valiant. You need to be getting into them if you haven't got into them. The story here is just so, like you said, well, so well put together and laid out there that you know you're going to be intrigued and you're going to be just drawn into it to want more. Absolutely, you won't regret putting this on your monthly pull list. Yeah, this is something that you definitely just want to just grab. And we're only at issue three, so just get them. Like get these three, and then you know when four comes out. Make sure you're getting that in the pull list. I think I said this for number one. I think I said it for number two. But if you read comic books and you're not reading Bloodshot Salvation, you don't read comic books. Mm-hmm. So tell us what you thought of this book in the bottom. Also give it th- give us your theories down there in the comments. We want to hear them. And we want to thank you for watching Hoodoo TV. Thanks, guys. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button below. There's also that subscribe button down there, too. Make sure you punch that. We'd appreciate it. Follow us at Twitter, at Hoodoo TV, also on Facebook. Yeah, and we'd like to thank our friends over at OutrightGeekery.com. Be sure to check them out. They got all sorts of nerdy stuff on there. Link down in the description. Thank you for watching Hoodoo TV. We appreciate you guys.